हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग या स्टार्ट आवर टॉपिक विल स्टार्ट विद न्यू टॉपिक टुडे व्हिच इज कॉल्ड डायनामिक प्रोग्रामिंग एंड विल लुक एट हाउ दिस अप्रोच इज डिफरेंट लास्ट अबाउट सेवन एट लैक्टर्स वी हैव स्टडीड ग्रीडी अप्रोच दैट मींस वी टेक given the current set of information whatever decision we can take in the current best circumstances take that and proceed with that and we have seen in some situations the decision turns out to be optimal but that may not always work we seen it works for fractional knapsack when it comes to zero one knapsack which we will discuss it will not always work it will not work in some other conditions as well So we'll take another approach, which we call dynamic programming. As before, you can see the resources. This topic is from Aurobic Sani, section five point one, general introduction, and I also give you few resources there as well. You can look at those resources, and that's what also. work fine sorry one minute i notice it is not working okay so the i would like you to look at the tutorial second link or even hacker pack practice that will give you a better idea on what a dynamic programming a dynamic programming approach can be summarized in just one sentence if you want to look at those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it or we often say do not repeat the history that basically means in our context if you have solved some problem earlier let us not solve it again because solving it again is going to waste our time so if already solution is available can you remember this solution use it and proceed and that is primarily what dynamic programming is approach remain the same as before like divide and conquer dd approach given a problem break into set of small sub problems solve each problem and solve each prob sub problem only once that means if a sub problem appears again and i'll give you an example in a short while when can sub problem appear again and then we remember it but don't solve problem again and again and you see if you solve the problem again and again we basically waste our time and then combine the solutions of the sub problem To build up on a solution, solve bigger problem. Now, when you say we need, if you can solve the sub problem again and again, that basically implies are the sub problems overlapping? Overlapping means we already solved a problem, and we are resolving it. That's the meaning of overlapping. And I'll give an example of that. Let's look at example of Fibonacci number series. We all know that Fibonacci number series. It is specified by f n is equal to f n minus one plus f n minus two. That means we'll call a function. So if our function happens to be, if we were to define function if o n, we would basically be calling if n is equal to zero or n is equal to 1 we say return and else we say return fib n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2 now look in this case when we call fib n minus 1 
to come here is going to call fib n minus 2, which we are anyway calling before. So we are calling fib n minus 2 twice and we are doing a repeat of computation and that is what we call is overlapping sub problem. We are, if you are solving this problem again, we are wasting our time and that is basically what it means. We don't want to compute twice. If you can remember the results, we can use it, save our time, and become efficient. And that is the primary whole concept of dynamic programming. If you solve these some problems, sub problem before, store the result, remember it, what kind of sub problem we have solved, and then use it. That means any sub problem is to be computed only once, is to be solved only once. And that essentially is dynamic programming approach. So dynamic programming always works better when there are overlapping sub problems. If there are none, then other approaches would equally work fine. And so let's look at compare dynamic programming other approaches like we discuss divide and conquer. We also discuss greedy algorithm or let's say what is the difference and how do we compare dynamic programming with divide and conquer. In divide and conquer, a problem is divided into sub problems. Sub problems are solved, and then we get the main problem. The divide and conquer works when problems do not overlap. For example, if let's say if I am doing sum of n numbers, sum of n numbers, so our numbers are n1, n2, n3, up to let's say nk, I divide them into first half nk by 2 and then second half nk by 2 plus 1 2n. Now look, this sub problem, first half sub problem, second half sub problem do not overlap and we solve this separately, we solve this separately and it works great. And that's the reason we say this divide and conquer, if we divide a problem into two half and the problem do not overlap, it works better. But if problems do overlap, then they don't work like in Fibonacci series. If I do Fn is equal to, when I say in Fibonacci series, Fn is equal to Fn minus 1 plus Fn minus 2, I certainly divided my problem into the problem of size n. I divided into size n minus 1 size n minus 2 but fn minus 2 is part of this problem and problems overlap and that basically gives me what is called exponential solution. So divide and conquer doesn't work better when sub problems here sub problems because we end up wasting compute time. So dynamic programming we store the sub problems and I give you examples of those how does really work out. So let's take a simple example of computing x raised to power n or what we call is power x. We want to compute this and let's say how does this program would work when I use divide and conquer versus when I use dynamic program. A simple program as you've seen, if n is equal to zero, return one. Else, if n is one, you can return x. If n is e1, then compute power x n by 2, star power x n by 2, otherwise n is odd. If it is odd, let's say n is equal to 7, then I can say power x comma 3, star power x comma 4. And that is what, if n is odd, take power x n minus 1 by 2 and x plus 1 by 2. So this is what basically we do. And now look what is happening here. In this case, my time complexity is I given a problem size n, I divided it into two problems size n by 2 and compute it. Now is this case of overlapping sub problem? I would like to answer where is the overlapping happening here? Or where are the one we are redoing the work and would like to answer so that if you can answer I can understand that you know what you're talking about. 
Anyone like to answer in this case, in this power x and n, where are we reusing sub problems and computing again, wasting our time? Ranjita? Aruna, would like to answer? Anyone else? Anyone would like to answer where is the we are recomputing same problem again or where is overlapping occurring again? Okay, no one wants. Yeah. So look, we are doing we are computing Aruna answered. We are computing this power x n by 2, and we are computing same thing again. And this is what is called wastage of space. And because we are computing it again, it's not even for n even, even for n odd, we'll end up doing the same thing, we'll end up computing again and again. And let's see, even if n is odd, we'll, where do we recompute? Let's say my n happens to be n is equal to 9. Then I'll compute power x comma 4 star power x comma 5. x comma 4 will compute power x comma 2 star power x comma 2 and power x comma 5 I'll compute power x comma 2 into power x comma 3. So look at this x comma 2 power I'm computing 1, 2 and 3 times and that is where it's called overlapping sub problem. So not even if n is odd, even if n is even, we keep computing it again and again and that will waste our time. If I were to use my dynamic programming and because of this over computation, this time taken is order n, though if you don't use if you can store the result and save it, this I can get the result in order log n time and will show this in a short while. So let's look at the case, other iterative case. I'm saying start result is equal to 1, or i21 result is equal to start star x and return result. Time complexity is again order n, but are we over, are we desolving sub problem again or are we using the result sub problem? If you look at in this case, we are reusing the sub problem. Why? We reuse the result of x raised to power 1, then we store the result of x raised to power 2. x power 2 is used in computing x power 3, x power 3 is used in computing x power 4. So we are reusing the result previously computed. And in that sense, in this case, result sub problem was stored and reused, but it so happened that we still get time complexity order. Look at the same problem again and do it smartly, can you do better? Let's look at this case. n is equal to 1 return x. If n is even, compute the value of power x and y2, y is equal to this, and then return y star y or y square. Else, if n is odd, compute y is power x and minus 1 by 2 and return x star y square. And that is what we get result. Now, can anyone tell me why this time complexity is order log n? This algorithm, if I was doing previously, if you look at when I was computing y is equal to power x n by 2 star power x n by 2 this was giving me time complexity of order n 
but when I do this, this gives me time complexity of order log n. Look, when I am doing this, I'm computing power twice, so my recurrence relation becomes p n is equal to t n by two two times plus we combine the result one and that's the reason we get the result order n. When I'm doing this, I'm solving the problem only once times, so my answer is t n becomes single t n by two. I'm not doing it twice. That means if n is eight, I'm solving it only four, two, and that means I keep solving only one problem in log n time, and that's the reason this gives me time complexity of order log n. So just by storing the result, like here, I'm storing the result and reusing the result. This is where the computing one, this is where the plus one comes in. Here I'm computing once, and this probably plus. I'm committing two multiplications, one and two. And since I'm storing the result and reusing it, I get the efficiency of all the lag n. And that's the beauty of what you call is dynamic program. Let's compare our dynamic programming with greedy approach. In greedy approach, essentially, under the given circumstances, takes first decision, which is the most optimal one, the most suitable one then take the next decision which is the next best optimal and keep proceeding this way till we find the whole solution. Further, the key part of PD approach is once we take a decision, the decision is never rejected, we never change the decision again. Once the decision is taken, the decision is not changed at all and that is what the PD approach is. And so, this basically works when L problems are kind of suitable for greedy approach. Greedy approach does not work out. Other thing one has to realize, greedy approach gives me only one solution. Because at each step, we take only one decision and the sequence of decisions gives me only one solution even though there may exist multiple optimal solutions. But once you follow greedy approach, we only get one solution. Let's say we look at minimum cost spanning tree. There could be multiple minimum cost spanning tree, but any greedy approach we take, whether prints or crystal, we always get only one minimum cost spanning tree, which is optimal, but there could be more than one optimal solutions, but greedy approach only gives me one solution. When dynamic programming, it can give us multiple optimal solutions, and we look at some problems like n twins or four twins, we'll see how can there be multiple solutions, multiple optimal solutions, and dynamic programming gives us both of them. We've seen the Gideon plus problem, fractional knapsack, like given a knapsack or a bag of capacity M, we need to fill up n weights, each of having weight W1 to Wn, each gives us a profit of P1, objective is fill the knapsack to the maximum, and so that our profit is maximized. We also look at job scheduling, that different jobs start different time, how we schedule it, look at machine scheduling problem, given number of jobs, how many jobs we can schedule on a given machine with their deadlines, this is what is called a given deadline. We look at minimum cost spanning tree problem, PIMS algorithm, fiscal algorithm, then we look at single source hot path problem, zinc test algorithm. These are the examples of and each of these, if you look at each of these problems, greedy approach only gives one solution. We never got more than one solution, even though more than one optimal solution exists, we only get one solution. But dynamic programming may give multiple solutions, and the study will look at and explore. So, essentially, as we said in dynamic programming, key part is make use of basic memorization. If you solve a problem, use the result and then do it. We've seen that in Fibonacci number series. If I can store the result of fn minus two, I don't have to compute it again. 
and we look at the this is called knapsack problem is a zero one knapsack problem that means either we take item in full or not i cannot take item in fractions and part and that is what the zero one knapsack problem make use of that result tower of hanoi we know how to solve let's say we are in four days if we know how to solve with three days then we can solve it within four days and so on so forth and we look at these problems some of these problems done in programming we look at knapsack we look at alpine shortest path we look at few other problems optimal binary search tree and something that is what we'll basically dynamic programming we can solve both ways one is called top down approach other is called bottom up approach when you look at computation factorial n when i say factorial n if i am doing bottom up approach i say for i in range n and i say answer is answer is star i i am iterating it some building from that basically means first i compute factorial 1 then i compute factorial 2 then i compute factorial 3 and finally i get factorial n so starting from the base i keep building up solutions and that is what we call is bottom up approach top down approach means top down approach basically means we first call factorial n this will say call factorial n minus 1 this will call n minus 2 So from the top problem, keep going to the bottom, and then build up the solution, and that is what is called top-down approach. It works in so dynamic programming. Depending on the problem, we look at both bottom-up and top-down approach, and that is what we look at. So when you do top-down approach, top-down approach, you either do the recursion, bottom-up mostly we are not seeing iteration, and that's what we basically see. So comparing with dynamic programming, let's look at Finding the shortest path from node A to node B. Now, if we greedy approach, let's assume the shortest path from node A to node B involves intermediate nodes are node one, node two, node three to node K, and that means if I'm doing a greedy approach, at each step I should get the optimal solution. I should get only that node. That means if I start from A, my first node should be n one. Now, when I start from n one. My first node should be n two, and so on so forth. So, given this problem, greedy approach will see the greedy approach does not work. Greedy approach does work if I am looking at single node shortest path problem to all nodes. But if I am looking at from given node to another node, just search shortest path between two nodes, greedy approach does not work. And I'll probably look at the example. Let's look at the example here. I want to find shortest path from between B and E. First one is find the shortest path between B and E. Anyone like to answer what is shortest path between B and E? Avinash, would you like to answer? Shortest path bit from B to E. What is shortest path between B and E? B F E, sir. What is one? B F E. Correct. Shortest path is if you look at shortest path, it is B to F and F to E. But if I take a greedy approach, when I take a greedy approach, I start from B. Which is the first node I would choose? I need to find shortest path from B to E. I am starting from B, using my greedy approach. Which is the first node that I would choose? Will I choose F, or will I choose something else? I would choose C because that is the shortest distance from B, and we know that C is. C is not on the shortest path from B to E. So greedy approach does not work if you are trying to find shortest path between given two nodes. However, greedy approach works if I am finding shortest path from B 
to all other nodes because I know I need to find sorters part to C, I need to find sorters part to A. So if I am doing single source sorters path, single so single source sorters path to all other nodes. To all nodes, my greedy approach work. But if I'm finding shortest path between one source to one destination, my greedy approach does not work. And a simple example, and we look at how does my dynamic programming would basically work out. We look at you look at any of the approaches, whether you take Prince, Criscal, Dexa, each one of them will pick up C. Though it is, does not lie in sorters path between B and C E. So we see the greedy approach does not work for a problem of one source, one destination, but it works from one source to all other nodes. And that is what we look at. So let's look at again simple example of what overlapping sub problem is, how do we store it? I'll probably give an example of Fibonacci number. We know that how this number is computed twice. Let's see a given count. Fn, when fn invokes fn minus 1, fn minus 2, so fn minus 2 is computed twice. But directly, second row fn minus 1, fn minus 3 computed 3 times, fn minus 4 computed 5 times. Look at the following so fn is fn minus 1, fn minus 2, when you expand this, we have fn minus 2 and fn minus 2. So are computing fn minus 2 twice. Look at fn minus 3. We have a 1 fn minus 3 here, 1 fn minus 3 here, and we expand this further. We get one more fn minus 3. So number of fn minus 3 we are doing three times. If you look at same way fn minus 4, when you expand this, you get fn minus 4 here. This fn minus 4, this fn minus 3 we get fn minus 4. This also gives fn minus 4 and fn minus 4. So we compute fn minus 4 five times. And the same way if we look at fn minus 5, we do compute it eight times and so on and so forth. And that is how numbers keep increasing. And that is what the overlapping sub problem. Just to look at graphically, Fibonacci 6 will invoke Fibonacci 5 and Fibonacci 4. Fibonacci 5 would invoke Fibonacci 4 and 3. So look, we are invoking this air, we are invoking this air, and if further expand, this will invoke 3 and 2, we already have a 3, this will further invoke 3 and 2. So look at number of times we are invoking the Fibonacci 4. Fibonacci 4 is invoked 2 times, Fibonacci 3 invokes 3 times, and if you look at Fibonacci 2, it would be invoked 5 times because this will give me 1. This will give me again Fibonacci 2. This will also give me Fibonacci 2. I have one Fibonacci 2 here. This will also give me Fibonacci 2. So 1, twice, twice, 4 times, and 5 times. Fibonacci 2 gets computed 5 times. And this is what example of overlapping the problem. And that is what you need to basically look at. So you can look at Fibonacci 2 is expanded 1, twice, thrice, 4 times, and 5 times. And look at Fibonacci 1, it will be even 8 times, will come here, and so on, so forth. So Fibonacci 1 would be 1, it will come from here, it will come from further here, here, it will come from here, come from here, here, and come from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7 and 8. So that's why you see it becomes overlapping sub problems. And you can get the details I taken from this URL. Those interested can refer to it so you get better. Let's look at another problem called knapsack problem. And we are looking at knapsack problem as decide the value xi and decision is made on xi. First we made decision on x1, which is the most profitable one. Then we take second item, most profitable one, and so on and so forth. And this optimal decision gives us a maximum of the profit. 
and that is what you basically do. And for the fractional knapsack, it basically works. We look at how font trees are encoding that the numbers that after least we can see should be given lower, longer code, and these items that occur quite often should be given shorter code. We look at open encoding, and that's the way my greedy approach basically works. Again, looking at shortest path, so we say vertex V1 to vertex Vj. If I were need to take optimal decisions, we need to look at what should be my second decision, third decision, fourth decision, fifth decision, and so on and so forth. And that is what we're trying to look at. And in greedy approach, we've seen that it doesn't work, but we'll see dynamic approach can there be work. Like in the shortest path case, we've seen if you were making a decision based on local information, like from we say in the case of node B to node E, the shortest path happens to be node C, which is the local information. And based on local information, we cannot get the right decision. We cannot make optimal decisions. So GD approach does not work for all solutions. It will work for certain cases, but not for others. And that is what we need to look at. How do we really work out? That means we have to use what is called principle of optimality to make the good decisions. And the principle of optimality says that when we take whatever my initial state is and whatever my initial decisions are, after that, I from initial state, I took my first decision. Remaining decision also must be an optimal decision. So if after making my first optimal decision, if remaining decisions are also optimal decision, that means my overall solution would be optimal. If my, at any given state point, if I don't take the optimal decision, then my overall decision would not be optimal. So essentially, principle of optimality says, at any stage you take a decision, the decision is optimal at that point in time, and then all subsequent decisions must be optimal, then overall solution would be optimal, and that is primarily the principle of optimality. That means at each stage you take a decision, take that decision, optimal decision, and then you'll get the uh, total optimal solution. And we see, we see in the greedy method, we make only one decision. In the dynamic program and study example, we say we take multiple decision sequences and there could be multiple answers, and we look at those. So let's look at does the optimality principle apply to shortest path? Consider shortest path from vertex vi to vj and assume that shortest from vi to vj is consists of vi1, vi2, vi3 up to vj. Now at vi, we assume the shortest path consists of vi1 and somehow we chose the vertex vi1. This may not work with beauty approach, but using some optimal approach, we know that from vi to find a shortest from vi to vj, my next node is VI1. And now my problem remains finding a shortest path from VI1 to VJ. And let's say this solution would be VI1, VI2, because if this is not the optimal path, and then that means the solution VI to this would not be optimal path. So assuming from VI1 to VJ is the optimal path, and if this is not the shortest path, assume is a different shortest path from VI1 to VJ. That means the length of the cost VI1 plus VR to this edges, this edges is the shortest. If this is the shortest path, that means the original problem, my shortest path would be V1 to VI1 to VR2. This would be my shortest path. But we said our shortest path happens to be this, which is what then made assumption was wrong. So that means this that there is other the shortest path from VI1 to VJ is not correct. So if you take optimal decision, we always make sure that all of that is optimal, then overall solutions remain optimal. And that is what basically is saying, principle of optimality will the problem, which again, if one point I take optimal decision, and all subsequent points I take optimal decision, then my overall solution is going to be optimal, and that is primarily the principle of optimality. Let's look at the problem 0, 01 knapsack. 0, 01 knapsack problem is either we take item in full 
or we don't take at all, which is different from fractional left sack where we can take where the item. Any questions, please feel free to ask. We will probably get into these details when we study the knapsack problem. Assuming knapsack problem is one and that means we are given an items. So we're given item one to n and knapsack has a capacity of m. Choose those weights so that our profit is maximum. I'm saying let ijy the sub problem is choose from item i number to item j with a capacity of y and this indicates my optimal decision for ijy. And objective is make the maximize the profit pk xk and xk could be either 0 or 1. xk cannot have parcel amount. The xk could be 0 or 1, nothing else. And that is what we're trying to look at. So let's assume the optimal solution again for value of x1, y1, x1 could be some combination. That means some y1 would be 1, some yi would be 0. So it could be, let's say, 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, so that means some item number 2 is included. Item number, let's say some solution is this optimal solution, and that means y1 could either 0 or 1. That means some items are included, some are not included, and we we'll look at does the optimality principle hold good for this case. If y1 is equal to 0 means item number is not included. This would be the case when its weight happens to be more than m. If weight of item 1 is more than m, certainly we can't include it because that will exceed the capacity of nap, even though it has the maximum profit. If y1 is not included, then optimal solution for 1 and m would be 2 and m because 1 is not included. I still need to pick items with weight m from item number 2 to m. This must be the optimal and that optimal sequence has to be y2 to y3 to yn. If assume, let's say this is not optimal. When we solve the problem, nap 2 and m, and we are saying, because of our, our considering our original solution, this was optimal, we are saying for k nap 2 m, this should be optimal. Then by contradiction, assume this is optimal for 1 and m, But this is not optimal for 2 and m. If this is not optimal for 2 and m, let's assume there's another solution called Z and m for this. Let's say this is optimal solution. So that means my optimal solution would be, now look at, if y1 is equal to 1, that means my capacity becomes m minus w1 because I already taken weight of item number 1, which is w1. So my net weight I need to look at is m minus w1 and to look at that part. So if y1 is equal to 1, assume this is the optimal solution, then we would say this profit pk jk would be greater than this. And that means my total profit would be p1 plus pk jk, which is going to be greater than this. And that cannot be the case because we say this was the optimal solution. So that means if at any point in time we have optimal reason sequences, if y1 is optimal here, remaining solution would also be optimal. And that is what the principle of optimality implies. So essentially, we are saying is always we look at initial de decision, initial state and decision, and that is true for intermediate state and decision. Any point in time we take optimal decision, it should be fine. We have seen the shortest path gate. If this is the optimal decision from vi to vj, then from vi1 to vj, this would be optimal decision because if it is not, that things won't work out. And that is what the principle of optimality says. And we basically look at that when we solve the different problems in the using dynamic program. So we already looked at that. So let I'll skip this and we'll come to when you look at knapsack problem, we come to that part. So primarily. How do we approach the dynamic programming? We can look at, as I said, two approaches. One is top-down approach, which basically makes use of recursion. Other is bottom-up approach, which basically means use iteration. The first is recursion means break sub-problem to sub-problems, solve the sub-problems, but 
and problems already solved use the result a problem is not solved solve it and save the answer this is the key part in dynamic programming problem has not been solved solve it store the result and use that result later and that's the reason dynamic programming gives me what seems to be exponential solutions would give me polynomial time answers and we look at basically those and this is what is called the memorization when you store the result and use it again this is what is called memorization if we look at greedy approach and we look at other cases we don't memorize it a dynamic programming focus happens to be memorize and store the result and use them again in bottom up rather than starting from size of n you start from lowest small size let's say one two keep storing the result and reuse them later but when you do, use this the approach works fine but sometimes this may basically be under wasting time because we may not use all these solutions and for example if i were to use my binomial component let's say i want to compute nck let's say i want to compute pick c3 then i would computing it 5c1 to 5c5 4c1 to 4c4 and we may not be reusing all the solutions so we may end up solving other sub problems which you don't need to use but that is the bottom of approach so based on the problem we need to make our own decision do we need to take top down approach or do we take bottom up approach that will depend on the solution we look at that and the problem that we'll address using dynamic programming would be first we look at what is called the multi stage graph that is what we'll discuss tomorrow then we look at flood varsal algorithm that is shortest path between all pairs from each node to every other node is shortest path we look at flood the so floyd is for transit closure varsal is for shortest path then we look at zero one abstract problem we probably look at some other problem longest chain we also look at optimal binary search tree optimal bin search tree look at some of these problems and see look at how do we solve this problem using dynamic program so in summary we have basically looked at how the dynamic programming works and the key concept is if a given problem you break into sub problems and this sub problem overlap meaning sub problems repeat we store the result of those problems make use of it and because of make use of it it gives a better result then we study comparison with the greedy approach we also compare it with the divide and conquer approach and these are we basically study and we said we depend upon principle of optimality means at each state of decision if we take optimal decision then our overall solution would be optimal and that is what will basically dependent upon on the dynamic programming an example of problem suitable for dp we looked at the we look at floyd varsal floyd algorithm for transit closure varsal algorithm which will be studied down the line for all pair shortest path we also look at optimal binary search tree we look at multi stage graph we will look at zero one abstract problem so the five six problem we look at and study standard programming so with that i am done if you have any questions please feel free to ask otherwise we could close it sir yeah go ahead sir lecture 17 slides are you have much to attach in the mail sir okay I'll just send me that in the this thing email send me email or send that okay. not there Okay. All my lecture slides are in GitHub as well. So if you go to okay, GitHub, sir. all of them are there. But I'll send them in e email again. So you are saying. Okay, I'll do that. Let me make a note. After the lecture, I'll do that. Anything else? Any other question? Let me know any other questions, any kind.
So just to repeat, your department schedule at internal exam two on I think May one from two to three thirty, and the syllabus for that is DD approach. That means whatever problem we discuss, L seventeen to L twenty four. And just to repeat, since this is exam from taken from the home, that means you have to write the answers on your plain sheets, A4 sheets or line whatever available with you. Take a scanned copy and send it by email to me. But make sure on each page you write your USN number and page number so that we know what we are doing. Look at that part. And again, let me tell you the Though even the question may be the same, but your prob it's going to be mostly based on problem solving approach. I'm not going to ask you describe PIMS algorithm or describe Prescott algorithm. What I'm going to ask you is given this graph, can you apply PRIM algorithm to compute? Or given this input, can you perform heap sort? Or given this input, can you build up one tree? Something of that kind. And your Input would be different for each student. It's going to be dependent upon your name, USN number, or something that is individual to you. That means answer of a student one is not going to be the same as the answer of a student two. If you try to copy paste, you'll probably end up missing it. So solve your own problem, work it out, do a practice, and let me know. And your question paper pattern. Yesterday I was debating to change the pattern or no. I decided that pattern would be the mostly same. So whatever you have part A and part B, part A is two questions and part B is two questions. Do one question from part A and do one question from part B. So pattern would remain the same, will not change. That's what we'll get. Any other questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, I am done. Sir, is it going to be, can we use materials to answer the question, sir? You are at home, do whatever you want. Can I okay. do anything about it? You do internet checking, access it, do whatever you want. Okay, sir. But I can very much tell you, you will not find the answers in Google. Okay. And you don't try to say answer from your friends because his answer would not be the same as your answer. Even the question is same. Like I ask you, take the uh, your USN number, convert and sort it out differently, or take your name, sort the name as per alphabets, your answer is different than your friend's answer, because the names are different. You can apply the same approach, but you have to work it out. Any other question?